After eight years of sailing on Ruby Rose, we finally said goodbye to her. We had some amazing adventures across oceans, through canals, seeing three continents and many islands and countries. Ruby Rose 2 is coming at the end of the year and we cannot wait to continue our sailing adventures on board this amazing performance catamaran. However, between now and then we have to wait. And this is the story of what we've been doing and what we're going to do to keep ourselves sailing as we wait for Ruby Rose 2. Morning all, or is it evening? Day one, day one in quarantine. My head is full of bees. Um, I'm not quite sure what time it is. I think it's about 11 o'clock in the morning, which is midnight um, in London. Um, Theresa and I are both pretty, pretty insanely pleased to be here. Uh, the last week has been very stressful. Um, my sympathies go out genuinely to all 34,000 Australians and their families stranded overseas. Um, we were very, very, very lucky to get on a plane yesterday, or was it the day before? And this is our home for the next 14 days. Um, I'm not going to complain about it. It could be a cardboard box for all I care. I'm just glad to be in Australia. Um, as a little backstory, I don't actually want to go over it. I think I'm still so traumatized by the whole thing that um, it's still actually quite, you know, it doesn't make me feel good thinking about it. But there was a lot of stress with people getting bumped off flights with issues with um, flight caps being halved. And we were very fortunate to be in the half that didn't get um, booted off the flights. So we are here. Australia has a policy of hard lockdown for all its arrivals, which I think is actually a very sensible policy. And so for 14 days, this is going to be where we live. We have tea and coffee. We have three hot meals brought to us, hopefully on a daily basis. We're allowed to get our own food and more importantly, beer brought in. And we've got internet, TV, uh, a bath, hot water. So yeah, it's pretty cruisy. Not sure I'll be saying this in a week's time, but for now, um, I've just got to get the sleep patterns addressed, work towards getting my jet lag sorted out and look out of the window at a blistering hot Sydney rather than a freezing cold London. So day one. <laughs> Australia Day um, note, complete with the koala. We've got a couple of Tim Tams, which is basically our uh, national candy. It's a second rate penguin. It's a cool jumpy. I've never heard of that before. On day two of quarantine, and uh, I've just finished a little workout. Um, starting to feel slightly less spaced out than yesterday. Yesterday was just really surreal, kind of waking up and being in Sydney, except not quite. <laughs> you know, like being in a hotel room, looking out over Sydney suburbia, I guess. And I realised actually that the last episode that you saw of us was when we sold our boat and that was last September and obviously that was quite a long time ago now and well a lot has happened and also not much has happened all at the same time maybe you guys know the feeling so after we sold Ruby Rose which was a very strange moment um, very odd kind of feeling mixed emotions feeling very relieved and quite it was bittersweet, I think that's the only word I can think of to describe it. It was a bittersweet moment. We were really, really relieved and happy, but we were also really sad to say goodbye to our home of six years. Then we actually went to Greece, which is a bit of a weird thing to do, but 
We originally wanted to come to Australia, but with all of the um, passenger caps, we couldn't get a flight. We, it was just impossible to get a flight before Christmas. And uh, we were allowed to spend three months in Greece without having to kind of go through the rigmarole of applying for residency, which we didn't want to have to get into. A lot of that time was actually spent in lockdown, actually, because, you know, we were there for about four weeks and uh, then obviously autumn was uh, happening and all over Europe there was this second wave and Greece was no different although less affected than a lot of other European countries. That was actually okay, you know, we uh, we didn't really notice much difference to our daily routine because, you know, we still go for our daily walks, we used to go for a walk every day. We actually ended up adopting a cat which was a bit ridiculous actually, but when everything was still open in September, there was um, a restaurant around the corner that we went to, I would say most days. Um, they're kind of friends as well. So we went there all the time. This kitten would like, I've never known such a bold cat in like bold stray cat. You'd be sitting at your table and he would literally jump up on your lap and try and steal the food off your plate. And so we took him home. There's loads of other cats in the neighborhood and they could smell the cat food. And so one by one, we just ended up getting like all these cats. And we ended up with, I think like five cats or something. So we started putting food out for Pepe, the little kitten that we brought home. And uh, sure enough, like all the neighborhood cats have converged on our little courtyard out there. So yeah, at any one time, we tend to have anywhere between like two and five cats in the garden. It's all quite amusing. Hello, you finished, have you? Come on, get back on your towel. Back on your towel. Come on. How old are you? Yes, I know. Now. Sit. Alright then, you can go outside, no problem. Up you go. Oh, I see. Hello, who are you? It's okay, calm down. No, hello. <laughs> All right, calm down. When we left, you know, we felt really guilty about leaving the cats. So that was our autumn. And then a couple of weeks before Christmas, we made it back to the UK. Um, and that was essentially where we stayed until we flew out to Australia. So we're in full lockdown over Christmas. And, you know, as anyone who's been watching the news knows, it's all been pretty grim in the UK. Um, things are starting to look a little bit better now. Yeah, I just wanted to catch you up on uh, what we've been doing since selling Ruby Rose. Now we're facing the next 12 days here in this hotel room. How are you going with your game? Rather be sailing, babe. Soon. Soon, my love. Thank you. Three toes. Water. Oh, it's hot. How is it? Very good. Very good, actually. If I got to a restaurant, I wouldn't a fish and chip shop, I'd be happy. Mm. Day five of quarantine. I must say, it's it's been okay so far. Every day we get a phone call from a nurse um, saying, you know, how are you feeling? Do you have any symptoms? Everything okay? No, I'm just hungry. Like, 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 that's the only problem I have. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah. Hey, you too. Bye-bye. A daily call from the nurse. And we get three hot meals a day. So we got, uh, what do we have? Pasta. Macaroni. Macaroni, <coughs> Macaroni with... Um... Australia's fried garlic bread. I think if there was one thing that I wish we'd bought into quarantine, it's our rent cutlery. Yeah. 
don't know. I, I kind of was dreading this, this this time here, and obviously we've only been here for five days, so maybe ask me again in a week's time. I might be itching to get out, but so far, so good. Welcome to day seven of quarantine. Now, day seven is an important day. It's our halfway point. Celebrate our halfway mark by changing our linens. Honestly, uh, we, I've said this before, and joking aside, I am so <laughs> glad to be here. Um, I don't mind, I don't mind being in quarantine. I, I'm, I'm just happy to be in the sun, looking forward to, like our time in Australia. So um, this is the halfway point. In the words of John Bon Jovi, whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa, living on a prayer. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We are now on day, what day are we on? Eight. We're on day eight of quarantine. Now, I have something very important to show all of you non-Australians watching this. Yesterday was Australia Day, and you may recall that we were given some Tim Tams. Australians watching this, you already know what's coming. Non-Australians watching this, buckle up, because this is gonna change the world. If ever you are in a position where you have a Tim Tam in front of you, then the last thing that you wanna do is just eat it. What you absolutely have to do, and I've just realized that I've made a bit of a tactical error because my, in fact, I'm just gonna put a bit more water in my cup and you'll see why I need to do that in just a minute. I'll be right back. Right, nice full cup. Nick, have you I'm just been instructed in this? Yes, but you bite two corners off, it doesn't work. What you end up with is a soggy mess, biscuits in your soy milk, and something which still tastes like a second-rate penguin. I don't know what a penguin is. It's an upper-rate Tim Tam. Mm -hmm. All right, so, you bite two corners off, you just get rid of them. The purpose of that is not to enjoy the Tim Tam yet, it's just to get rid of the corners. And then, this is why you need quite a full cup, you use it like a straw. I've got chai tea, I think ideally it would be a coffee thing, or a hot chocolate thing. So, in we go. You have to be very quick, by the way, because it will melt and collapse into your drink if you are too slow. So it's all about timing. Oh God, that's hot. Mm. Okay, I kind of burned my mouth, <laughs> but it was worth it. And that, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, is how you eat a Tim Tam. Today is day 11, and I think we're over it. <laughs> Would you agree? Yeah, <laughs> I'm over it. We're over it now. It was kind of a novelty to begin with, and then we were just kind of enduring it, and now we're like... Over the hill. Actually, um, I'm over it. <sighs> Do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, the chef needs to raise his game, lazy <laughs> bastard. It was all right at first, now he's just basically finding out whatever he's got in the bot under his fingernails, sticking it into a dish and serving it up as dinner, bastard. I must admit that we've had a bit of a bad run with the food over the last few days. It's not been quite as amazing as it was the first week. Just can't really gather much energy right now. But uh, yeah, I must admit it's been a bit of a tough couple of days and we have three days to go it's saturday and we're set free well we're actually set free on tuesday evening at about six o'clock um but uh because here in australia we have states like the united states and like the us each state is has its own government um, but unlike the US, in Australia, they've decided to actually enforce border controls throughout this pandemic, which is not ideal. Like, we're one country, we shouldn't have borders within our own country, in my opinion. But um, they have been implementing border controls, like hard borders between states whenever there's an outbreak in a certain state. 
and um, there has been a recent outbreak in Sydney and there's been two weeks now with no cases at all, which I think like for the rest of the world is just a completely foreign concept. Um, but South Australia, where we're trying to get to, which is where I'm from, um, closed their borders to Sydney. And as such, we have to go straight from hotel quarantine to the airport, like not actually kind of see the outside world, like literally just hotel, taxi, airport, plane, um, so that we don't have to quarantine again for another two weeks <laughs> when we get to Adelaide. So because of the flight times, you know, there's not a flight until Wednesday morning at nine o'clock in the morning. So we have to stay here another night. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be in a better mood. One of our amazing fans, or two of our amazing fans and followers, sent us a present. Stuart and Kim, thank you so much. Um, it's really thoughtful, actually. Saturday afternoon, three days left. And uh, whew, it's one of those things, the closer it gets to the end, the more it drags. Cheers, babe. So, what day is it now, babe? Day 13. And what do you now have that you didn't have of that an hour and a half ago? A lovely wristband that kind of looks a little bit like we've been admitted into hospital and also a little bit like I've been allowed entry into like a club or something or like a rave or a music festival. A rave. <laughs> a rave. 2006 was called cool, babe. <laughs> <laughs> We're out. Day 14. We made it. <laughs> Ugh. Very odd couple of weeks in our lives. Hopefully something that we never have to do again, although who knows. We have uh, our last bag of food being delivered, hopefully quite soon for lunch. And then this evening we're left to our own devices as far as food is concerned. So I think, I don't know, Nick's been craving pizza, pizza and beer. To celebrate our last night in quarantine and then tomorrow morning, away we go. 14 nights all inclusive. <laughs> oh, it smells good. Mm. Is it good? Jeez. Mm. So, thank you for watching this week's episode. It's been a bit different. Obviously, not much sailing going on in hotel quarantine in Sydney, but we wanted to show you guys something a little bit quirky, something a little bit different. I thought it would be the type of episode that I'd like to watch from another channel just because it is so like different to what normal life is like for most people right now. Next week's episode is definitely going to be sailing based because we will be taking delivery of our Seawind 1260 catamaran and we are sailing this 1260 along the coast of New South Wales and around the Sydney area. And I'm so excited about that. We have been talking for ages about trying to get on board a catamaran and do some catamaran sailing, something that we have not done much of, despite the fact that we have obviously done all these reviews and we have done some test sales. We spent a little bit of time on board different catamarans, but you know, we're buying a catamaran at the, well, we've already bought this catamaran. We're taking delivery of the 1370 at the end of the year. And before that happens, we really want to increase our experience sailing catamarans because it is a different beast to sailing monohulls. In fact, that's gonna be the episodes that you're gonna be watching on our channel for the next few months at least because we are doing a lot of sailing in Australia this year. So if that sounds like something that excites you, that you're interested in, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I know we go on about it all the time, subscribe, 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 but it really does help our channel. Um, so if you like us, do hit that subscribe button. Comment down below and let us know what you thought of this week's episode of us stuck in quarantine. Was it fun? I hope it was fun. I, I've tried to make it fun for you to watch. Slightly less fun in real life, but <laughs> nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you 
next week. Bye.